Hey everyone, welcome to day nine of our AI photo editing series. Today we're jumping into Lightroom to explore two brand new AI features, including lens blur as well as AI denoise. AI lens blur uses artificial intelligence to automatically detect your subject and then blur the background realistically, mimicking a depth of field effect from a higher end digital camera. This tool is by far my favorite way of blurring your photos in Photoshop. The end results are realistic and you can even paint in where you want blurred and where you want to be in focus. We'll also cover AI Denoise, which is a simple tool that completely removes all the noise from your photographs. Now, as of now, it works with raw photographs and in the future, it's going to be coming to JPEGs as well. As always, you can download all of the sample images, including this raw file. It's totally free. Just click on the link right down below to sign up for our AI photo editing series. So here we are in Lightroom Classic for our first example. Our subject looks great. What a beautiful photograph all around. I just want our subject to stand out from the background just a little bit better. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. We're going to move to our develop module right up here on the very top. Now within our develop module here on the right hand side, you're going to see lens blur. That's right. It gets its own category. So let's go ahead and open up lens blur and show you how this works. I'm going to zoom out of the photograph just a little bit. So with lens blur, the first thing you're going to want to do is just click here on apply. Now, once it does this, this is going to analyze your image. It's going to automatically detect your subject. And as you can see, it blurs the background flawlessly. Now, there are some features that I do recommend working through on your own. Let's go ahead and scroll down. So you can see here you have your blur amount here where you can change the actual blur amount on your background. Just with any post-processing feature, I recommend keeping it on the subtle side. If you go too much, your results are not going to look very realistic in my personal opinion. So I recommend just keeping these a little bit more subtle. Now you can choose the type of bokeh that you'd like. Basically, this is what the out of focus areas look like. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to hit command plus a couple times to do this. We're just going to go to these out of focus areas right over here so you can see how each of these look through our different bokeh options. So you can really choose what you'd like the most. I tend to use just this standard version. Okay, you can use this cat eye effect as well, which will basically stretch out the background and you can boost highlights as well. Let's go ahead and see if any highlights are bright enough to be boosted. Okay, not so much information there, but if you do have highlights, you can, uh, like if you have light sources in the background, it'll boost the brightness of those. Okay. Let's go ahead and zoom back into about 100% zoom. Our subject looks great. Now, here we have our focus range. You can manually adjust your focal range by clicking on this icon here and then moving it to make your subject out of focus or your background out of focus. So this is a really great way to move this. I recommend it's going to automatically detect your subject. So you can go ahead and click there to detect your subject. I also recommend using this target icon to point or area focus. If you click there, you can then simply draw a rectangle around your subject. And I find this does a great job at isolating the subject. So upon first review, if select subject doesn't work exactly how you want it, always use this target icon to just draw a rectangle right around your subject. And I find that works very well. Now, because this is using AI, there's no depth recorded in these original photographs. So it's analyzing the depth and figuring out what should be in focus, what should be out of focus. So what's nice about that is you can actually visualize your depth. Let's go ahead and click there to visualize our depth. I'm going to go ahead back and zoom to fit. And we can see these are the areas that are going to be in focus. These are the areas that are going to be out of focus. And here we have the visual cues in our focus range as well. So it's done a really good job identifying what should be in focus versus out of focus. Let's go ahead and turn off visualize depth. I'm going to move back into 100%. Now, if we want to, we can always use the brush refinement as well. This is going to be closed by default, but we can open this up and you can actually paint in where you would like to be in focus or where you would like to be blurred. This works really well, sometimes around edges of hair and things like that. You can go in, we'll just make our brush a little bit smaller. You can go in and just paint a little bit of blur. There we go. That's a little bit too much. Let's hit undo by hitting control or command Z. What we're going to do is bring our flow way down. There we go. And we're going to bring our amount way down as well. Now with this, you can just go ahead and paint a little bit right around the edge. And sometimes this helps you kind of like get more realistic edges. Now, if the results that you get from your original tools work well, you don't need to paint in any brush refinement, but sometimes it can help. In this case, honestly, it's done a really good job. Let's go ahead and zoom out here and take a look. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the slash key. Let's close our lens blur. 
I'm gonna hit slash, which is above the enter or return key. There's our before and our after with this photo. You can see what a great job this does for lens blur. Okay, now we've got one more example for lens blur as well. And this time we're gonna be doing some object removal in the background first to see, hey, does lens blur actually work even if you wanna do object removal as well? So this is our second photo in the series. Now we're gonna move into our develop module. I'm gonna to go to my remove icon. Let's go ahead and remove this. Our mode is just gonna be with the removal tool and we're gonna be using generative AI. That looks great. I'm gonna hit command plus a couple of times and then hold the space bar to click and move around my image. Let's say we wanna remove these boats. So we're gonna simply paint right over top of the boats here. Fantastic, let's make sure to go all the way to the edge and we're gonna remove the other boats at the same time. So we're just gonna simply paint here and remove all of these options, all of these boats. Let's make sure they're all highlighted. Now, if you do, let's say you paint over part of your subject, something like that, no big deal. Simply click on subtract, or you can hold alt or option and paint over the area you would like to remove from your selection, just to make sure you're not gonna be removing your actual subjects. We only want the boats to be removed. Okay. So now that we've selected the boats, let's go ahead and hit command minus a couple times to zoom out. We've selected the boats. You can see we have the red overlay. Let's go ahead and click here on remove. It's gonna remove this area using AI. Really, really powerful. Basically, this is like the remove tool in Photoshop. Okay, and as you can see, they are all removed. Our image looks really clean. How beautiful is that? So the big test here is, does that work with lens blur? Well, let's go ahead and test it out. So we're gonna go back to our general edit here and open up Lens Blur and then go ahead and click on Apply. There we go. And we're gonna see in real time, it works. How awesome is that? So if you need to remove something from the background, it's going to take that background removal and then use that basically as your new source image and apply the Lens Blur over top of that. And I still have all the same features. I can change my blur amount here as well. I can go ahead and use my target icon to click and drag a rectangle right over top of my subject. And you can see this image looks flawless. It's like you would never know, in my opinion, that a lens blur was applied using AI. So there's our before and our after with the AI lens blur. Honestly, it's an amazing feature. It works really, really well. Anytime you wanna do any type of blur with your photos, I highly suggest using this tool. Now, right now we're in Lightroom Classic, but you can get to this tool in Photoshop through Adobe Camera Raw in your filter menu. So if you do want this exact same filter in Photoshop, simply go to the filter menu, go down to Adobe Camera Raw. It's gonna list very similar and you're gonna see Lens Blur available to you in Photoshop. And the last tool we're gonna show you today is AI Denoise. Honestly, it's fantastic. Any type of noise that you have, maybe from shooting with a higher ISO, if you have a low light environment, you're gonna have little specks throughout your image. That's called noise. This AI denoise tool will completely remove all of it. It works incredibly well. Now, at the time of me recording this, it works with raw photographs only. It does not work with JPEGs. However, Adobe has announced that in the future, it will be available for JPEGs as well. So if you have raw photographs that have excessive noise, you can use this tool and it's a mind changer, mind blower. It's just amazing. <laughs> You're gonna like it. Let's jump in. So here's our raw photograph. You can download this and follow along. You can see it's a CR3 raw image. This was photographed at ISO 1250. We're gonna go ahead and zoom into our image way in and you're gonna see, yes, in fact, we do have a bit of noise in our photograph. It doesn't ruin the image, but we can get rid of it. So we're gonna move into our develop module here and go down to your detail module. So within detail, you're gonna see denoise. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna see it's gonna apply denoise using AI. And just like that, there we go. All of the noise is completely removed. As we scroll throughout our image, our subject looks amazing. We still have all of the details of our original image. Look at this. But as I go from, here's what it looked like upon import. You can see it's actually a relatively noisy image when we zoom in this far. I'm at 400% zoom, okay? If you zoomed out, you might not see it as much, but if it's a really important photo that you're maybe gonna print, here's our import, and then here's with denoise on. Now, as with all of these tools, you do have a slider here as well, so you can choose how much fidelity you'd like of your original image. Basically, find the mix that works for you, and that's all there is to it. It's a simple checkbox, but it works wonders. So the next time you have a raw photograph and you need to remove the noise, this is all you need to do. 
It's gonna give you a little bit more confidence when you're out and about shooting. If you need to bump that ISO up a little bit to get a faster shutter speed, basically let a little bit more light into the camera. Maybe you're photographing something at night and you're thinking, oh, it's gonna have some noise. Don't worry about it. AI Denoise will take care of it every single time. And this feature is available right now in the full release of Photoshop Classic, as well as Photoshop on the desktop. So you can see just how powerful AI editing has become, even in Lightroom Classic. Whether you want to blur your background or get rid of noise, these features are amazing. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, you can download these sample images so you can follow along. Just click on the link right down below. It's completely free to join our AI photo editing series. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up. You want to get more videos from our AI photo editing series, simply click on subscribe. Thank you so much, and I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone.